Ultima 3 Exodus was actually the first game I ever played on a computer, and it was amazing, even though at the time I was too young to really appreciate most of it. This is where the series really hit its stride. It dumped all the stupid phasers, space shuttles, and time travel, and became a more traditional fantasy RPG. The documentation, the artwork in the books, and the cloth map were awesome. Okay, so the story wasn't anything great. In fact, it's almost insultingly bad. You beat Minax, and Sosaria is once again happy. But little did you know that Mondane and Minex had a progeny named Exodus, and now Exodus is summoning up all the legions of hell to take revenge and, of course, take over the world. Of course! Seriously, after Mondane's psycho ex-girlfriend, we didn't check to make sure he didn't have any more children or distant relations or roommates at Hogwarts. Anything. Actually, it's never exactly clear what Exodus really is. The book says something about it neither being man nor machine, but, well, we'll get to that. I always loved the character creation for this game. You could customize your characters any way you wanted, change out party members at any time, and since you could create and store backups, you could even keep some characters on the bench to pinch hit in special situations, like if you needed a thief to go looting and disarming traps. You had a ton of character classes to choose from, even murderous spellcasting jesters called Larks. They can use any weapon in the game, but they can't wear any armor. I guess they're really fond of the motley. You had to play around with it to find out what each guy really did, and. In fact, I still don't know what an alchemist does. You had even more races to choose from, like Elf, Dwarf, Human, Bobbit, and Fuzzy. What the hell's a Fuzzy? Why do they make such good druids? What are they, Ewoks? What's a Bobbit? I guess they're mean hobbits and they don't take any crap. Don't mess with them or they'll cut your dick off. Oh, and you can even choose your gender in this game for some minor stat variations. Males tend to be stronger, females more intelligent, and others, well... Sometimes a guy just feels like he was born in the wrong body, you know? I don't think I've ever seen a game before or since this that let you play a character of, shall we say, unconventional gender. The beginning of the game features this little scene where four heroes are dueling with a dragon, which always just roasts him into ash. For some reason, I always got a chuckle out of that. The game's pretty open-ended, and as long as you go into all the dungeons to collect the magic marks, you're in pretty good shape. There are fiery marks on some of the walls that burn you when you touch them, but when you do that, they give you some magical benefit, like immunity to lava, force fields, and getting past the giant snake in front of Castle Exodus. The only trick is that you need to eventually sail into the whirlpool that prowls the oceans. Doing this shipwrecks you in a hidden continent called Ambrosia, and you have to go here to find the four magic cards necessary to defeat Exodus, and no, the magic cards have nothing to do with summoning Exodus. The Destroyer. The game's also pretty strange in that you can find the most powerful weapons and armor in the game almost immediately if you know where to look. The exotic weapons are always in the same place, and as soon as you get a boat, you can just go dig them up and equip them. Leveling up is also pretty simple, depending on how bloodthirsty you are. I remember one town called Fawn that's populated entirely by clerics, and all you have to do is run into town and outright slaughter everyone you see. Clerics give a pretty decent six experience points a pop, and there aren't any guards in the whole place to stop you. Even better, the entire town respawns every time you exit and re-enter, so it's basically free experience and treasure at a pretty rapid rate. Now, you'd think this is a really weaselly way to play the game, but really, I think it's almost expected of you to get the money you need to max out your characters. I guess it's good to be a murderous bastard sometimes. Attacking Castle Death, the stronghold of Exodus, is pretty intense. None of the usual tricks work here. For instance, you can't stop time. Worse, the whole castle crawls with demons and dragons, all of which can throw devastating blasts from all the way across the map. So if you're relying on melee fighters, you can count on eating about 500 points of damage before you even get within sword range. This is a good game to go heavy on spellcasters because believe me, the magic rocks. Oh yeah, I didn't talk about the magic. It's awesome. There are two separate books of fluff for magic alone, one for wizards and the other for clerical magic. Basically, the books just exist to tell you what the key mappings for each spell are, but the coolest spells are the ones that cause mass death. Early on, clerics get one that basically wipes out all the undead on the screen, and wizards get one that makes orc heads explode in mass. 
but the best wizard spell is P, which is a mass banishment spell that requires you to speak the name of he whose name must not be spoken, the dog one, and it kills pretty much anything. I thought Exodus was supposed to be the ultimate evil, but whatever, it's cool. The cleric's best spell is Zix... Zik Zik That's not how you pronounce it. What's it mean? It's a sound you make when you get your sexual organs trapped in something. <laughs> oh, it's not a word. It's just the first letter of the seven words of anti-creation. It's the anti-life equation! Holy crap! This game makes you feel like you're raining some serious death on dudes. But even with such potent magics at your disposal, the final century before you face Exodus himself is by far your deadliest and most nefarious foe yet! A lethal, unseen killer that all living mortals must one day face! The Floor! Yeah, the floor attacks you. This is what it looks like. They're completely invisible, and believe me, they hurt like a motherfucker. Unless you maneuver intelligently, you'll have no way of knowing where the pain's coming from. And even so, the odds are good you're gonna lose most of your party here. But seriously, the floor kicks your ass? I understand they want to make it difficult and throw in some invisible enemies, but the floor? We couldn't go with invisible swordsmen or something? How can the floor kick your ass? Swear to God, I'm gonna murder that dog. <laughs> All right, Tim Linscum. Tell me who the real freak is. Oh well, once that's done, you can finally confront Exodus, and he just turns out to be a computer, I think. And no, you can't just smash the console or unplug him. The only way to destroy him is to use the four punch cards you found in Ambrosia. And you gotta use them in the right order, or Exodus incinerates you. And how do you know what the right order is, besides trial and error? Well, you have to go find the Time Lord at the bottom of a dungeon and ask- No, not that Time Lord, this one. Well, it might be the same one, I don't know. Why he's sitting down in this place surrounded by monsters when he could just use his TARDIS and get out, I don't know. And no, I can't explain where Exodus or the punch cards come from. Tell you the truth, I was pretty disappointed by this ending. I expected some glorious final battle to cap off the trilogy with some horrible demon like the one on the cover of the box. Not learn your ultimate enemy was Skynet and your final battle was to beat up the floor and feed punch cards into a computer. But hey, Exodus dared to break tradition and it was a pretty good game to boot. Besides, I challenge you to name one other game where you can play a transsexual Ewok jester.
Gabriel von Sanchez. His art was ambitious in its scope. His masterpiece was, of course, Dance of the Anarchists. Brilliant. Sanchez then began to play Ultima Exodus, the role-playing video game from FCI. It was a strange turn. Sanchez loved the game, and he spent less and less time in the studio. He was never the same. Consider Man with Dog. Ultima Exodus for the Nintendo Entertainment System. Once you start playing, nothing else matters.